No, hey, hey, Jim. No, 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 we're doing a thing. We're, it's... Huh. Hi, I'm Dave Pickle. You know, you may know me from such classes as music, fifth grade chorus, or sixth grade chorus. Before we left school, we had talked about the Brass family. So I thought we'd do a little bit more here from home and maybe even teach you how to make your own brass instrument. So we covered all this in class extensively. So this is probably new information for all of you. Uh, the parts of the trumpet. This is the mouthpiece. It's the piece that goes to your mouth. It's a little mnemonic for you there. The mouthpiece is the piece that goes to your mouth. These are not called finger flickers, Austin. They are called valves. They go up and down, changing the length of the tubing and letting you change the pitches that you play. This is called the bell. The bell is named that because it kind of looks like a bell. So, now, as we know, all sound is vibration. So we need to put vibration into this horn to make it play. If I blow into it, no sound. So what I have to do, I have to buzz my lips to make the vibration go all the way down the pipe and out the other end. Now, I'm gonna try to show you a lip buzz. I'm gonna show you a lip buzz and we're gonna slow it down in post-production, all right? So here's what it looks like. I'm gonna start So that's what the lip buzz looks like, all right? And that's how we make the sounds. Now. Now we're gonna make our own musical instrument out of a funnel, some tubing, and the mouthpiece of a trumpet. Now, the mouthpiece of the trumpet, I had originally used uh, a 3D printer to print a wonderful little mouthpiece. But of course, I don't have a mouthpiece at home, so I have to get it a different way. Uh, that's called harvesting the mouthpiece. You harvest it from the trumpet. Not many people know that's what it's called, harvesting. So I'm going to take this um, this mouthpiece and I'm going to put it on this tube. Now this tube is about 10 feet long, uh, much longer than a trumpet would be, even if it were all stretched out. All right, so it's more like a French horn. It's like the, the length of a French horn. So we're gonna call this the French hose. Um, and I'm gonna take this mouthpiece, and now this is, this hose, like it's stuff you would use in like aquariums or I, I guess some plumbing you could use it for. Um, this is about five eighths in diameter, so it doesn't really fit. So I took a little paring knife and I put a little hole, or a little slit rather, right there so I can fit this in that tube, not well, but it will fit. There we go. So we have the tubing, we have the mouthpiece. Now all we need is the bell from the other end. We're gonna go to the other end and we're gonna Take this funnel and we're gonna make the bell. And this is the French hose. Now, the other fun thing about the French hose that I like very much is that it's so long that 
in theory, if someday, if you make one of these, and you really should try, if you try to make one of these, do me a favor, videotape it and send it over to me because I'd really love to see not only um, your creations, but I'd love to see what you do with your creations. Your parents are gonna love it. But you can take this other end and it, let's say you work across the hallway from like a band director or something, uh, you can put this underneath their doorway and then hide in your classroom across the hall and go and then yank it back across and she probably won't, he, he or she uh, probably won't know what you were doing for like, I don't know, 10 days, pick a number at random. All right, folks, your homemade French hose. We'll see you see you next time here in the music classroom. <laughs>